Christmas is only around the corner now, so for this whole month, I'm gonna be pumping out as many recipes as possible, making sure that you have the best dishes on the big day. For this first one, we're gonna be making potato dauphinois, and I know it's not really Christmas inspired, but it sure goes down well with it being creamy, soft, and ultra crispy. Please sit back, relax, and enjoy. All right, guys, getting this started, we're going to need 1.2 kilos or 2.6 pounds of Sebago, Maris Piper, or Russet potatoes. Let's slice off a thin strip to which we can then lay the potato on a flat surface, making it safer to work with, and continue slicing along into thin, even-sized strips. You will notice that it will start to become a bit wobbly when you start reaching the opposite side, which is dangerous, so lay the potato flat again, grip it tightly, keeping your fingers out of the way, and slice through into thin strips, leaving us with nice pieces like this. Moving on, we're going to need three cloves of freshly peeled garlic to which we can mince along a fine microplane or grater, and this can also be sliced if you prefer for a more mellow garlic flavor, but mincing it breaks down more of the allicin compound, which is what gives garlic its strong flavor and aroma. Next, here is five grams or 0.2 ounces of fresh thyme to which we can grip onto and give a rough chop, which doesn't need to be perfect. And I will also say that the thyme I have here has very soft stems that can be used. However, if yours is extra woody, you will need to pick off the leaves. One last thing, this is optional, so if you can't get it or don't want to use it, it's no stress at all. We're now going to need 260 grams or 9.1 ounces of fresh mozzarella and 100 grams or 3.5 ounces of fresh Gruyere cheese. And with both of these, run them along the largest side of a box grater. And for this, you can use just mozzarella if need be, which will cut down the cost of this dish. However, if you do do that, use 360 grams or 12.6 ounces of mozzarella. Once that's done, add both cheeses to a mixing bowl, get your hands in there to break it up and evenly combine, and this can then be set aside. Now for this part, I thought I'd finally show you which cream I use for all of my creamy recipes, which in Australia it's called thicken cream, but it's also known as whipping, heavy, or cooking cream. Now with that in mind, pour in 600 milliliters or two and three quarter cups plus one tablespoon worth into a small to medium sized saucepan. And to this, add in two and a half tablespoons or 35 grams of unsalted butter to create a rich and silky smooth flavor and texture. The minced garlic we did earlier to create an infusion within the cream. The roughly chopped thyme to create a floral flavor within that infusion. And season to taste with one teaspoon or five grams of sea salt flakes and 10 cracks of black pepper. Let's now place this over a medium high heat and using a spatula, wooden spoon or whisk, mix this all together to get those flavors moving around, start melting the butter and create our delicious garlic cream infusion. All we're looking for here is for the butter to melt and for the mixture to get hot without coming to a simmer or boil, so keep it moving around. Once that's achieved, this can then be given a final stir and then remove it from the stovetop. Now that that's all done, let's start to assemble this. So using a large baking or casserole dish that's roughly 26 centimeters by 18 centimeters in size, neatly lay down the thinly sliced potato, ensuring the bottom of the dish is completely covered and push down to lock it in. Next, pour over 200 milliliters or one third of the cream and garlic mix, trying your best to cover everything, which will create great flavor throughout each individual slice. Cover this with one third of the mozzarella and Gruyere cheese mix, again trying your best to cover everything, then season to taste with a pinch of sea salt flakes, and of course, cracked black pepper. Now once that's done and we have the first layer down, we're going to then do the same process two more times, neatly laying over the potatoes, pouring over the cream and garlic mix, topping it with the cheese mix and seasoning to taste until we reach the top layer, which we're not going to top with cheese, reserving it for later on. With this, cover the top with parchment paper, which will steam the potatoes, ensuring they're cooked through and absorb the flavors. Then cover this with aluminum foil or tin foil, locking it in nice and tight. Then transfer this to a preheated oven set to 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit and bake for one hour. Now, one hour later, let's then remove this from the oven, being careful of any escaping heat. Place it onto a heat resistant surface or wire rack and carefully remove both the aluminum foil or tin foil and parchment paper. Let's now spread over the remaining cheese mix, ensuring the top is completely covered, which is going to create an amazing cheese crust. Then carefully transfer this back to the oven and bake for 15 to 20 minutes or until it forms a beautiful golden crust on top. We can then remove it and turn off the oven as we no longer need it and allow this to sit for 10 to 15 minutes before slicing it. Once slightly cooled down, which has allowed the cheese to set, use a flat scraper to cut out your portions, leaving not a single slice of potato behind, revealing this absolutely incredible potato dauphinois that's creamy, cheesy, garlicky, soft, and crispy, which really is the perfect combination. 
As for serving this up, presentation is going out of the window for this one, and this is best used as a side for all of your favourite proteins and other veggies, as well as partnering perfectly with any Christmas lunch or dinner. With this, I'm then going to finish it off with a few cracks of black pepper, and to make all of this worthwhile, we can then reveal that beautiful cheese pull, and we can then dig in. So there we have it. This recipe right here serves four to eight people, and like most of my recipes, it can easily be double, tripled, and so on, or halved if you wanted to make less. To store it, you can place it in the fridge for up to four days and in the freezer for up to six months. And to reheat it, cover it with some aluminium foil and place it back in the oven on 180 degrees Celsius or 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And just heat it for about 20 to 25 minutes, ensuring that it's hot in the center. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to smash that like button, comment, share, do all of that stuff. It really does help my channel out and consider subscribing along with hitting that bell notification next to it so you never miss when I upload. Thanks for watching everyone, stay safe and enjoy.